hello everyone we are back with a new video here we are going to discuss about an important topic which is glycolysis so glycolysis simply means the breakdown of glucose glycolysis can be defined as the sequence of reactions converting glucose to pyruvate or lactate with the production of ATP. The enzymes for this pathway are present in the cytosol of the cell. Glycolysis does not require oxygen and can occur under both aerobic and anaerobic conditions. Glycolysis is the major pathway for ATP synthesis in tissue lacking mitochondria. It is an essential pathway for brain too. Now, let's come to the sequence involved in glycolysis. At first, glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate with the help of the enzyme hexokinase. Here, ATP binds to the enzyme as a complex with magnesium ion. And one ADP is produced. This is an irreversible reaction. Secondly, glucose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 6-phosphate with the help of the enzyme phosphoglucose isomerase. This, require, this reaction also requires magnesium ion. The third sequence is the conversion of fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-biphosphate with the help of the enzyme Phosphofructokinase. This reaction is rate limiting step of glycolysis. Phosphofructokinase is an allosteric enzyme whose activity is controlled by several allosteric modulators. Now, the first step is the conversion of fructose 1,6-biphosphate to dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Fructose 1,6-biphosphate is converted to dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate with the help of the enzyme aldolase, which is a tetramer. Two isoenzymes, aldolase A occurs in most tissue and aldolase B occurs in liver and kidney. Now the fifth point is the conversion of dihydroxyacetone phosphate to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate is converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate with the help of the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase. It is inhibited by bromohydroxyacetone phosphate. Talking about the sixth sequence, there is conversion of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to 1,3-biphosphoglycerate with the help of the enzyme glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. It is tetrameric enzyme containing four identical polypeptides. Four SH groups are present on each polypeptide chain. It is inhibited by iodoacetin and arsenate. The seventh point is the conversion of 1,3-biphosphoglycerate to 3-phosphoglycerate with the help of the enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase. Here, 2 ADP molecule is converted to 2 ATP molecule. This step is the good example of substrate level phosphorylation since ATP is synthesized without electron transport chain and it is reversible and a rare example of kinase reaction. Now the 8 sequence is the conversion of 3 phosphoglycerate to 2 phosphoglycerate with the help of the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase. This reaction requires magnesium ion. Now let's come to ninth sequence which is the conversion of 2-phosphoglycerate to phosphoenol pyruvate. 
with the help of the enzyme enolase. This reaction also requires magnesium ion or manganese ion. It is inhibited by fluoride. Now the last sequence is the conversion of phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate with the help of the enzyme pyruvate kinase. In this reaction, 2 ADP is converted to 2 ATP. Now, let's come to the energy production and utilization. During glycolysis, 2 ATP are expanded and 4 ATP are produced. Firstly, during the conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, 1 ATP is expanded. Secondly, fructose 6-phosphate when converted to fructose 1,6-biphosphate, 1 ATP is expanded. Hence, in total, 2 ATP are expanded. While, during the conversion of 1,3-biphosphoglycerate to 3-phosphoglycerate, 2 ATP molecules are produced. Also, during the conversion of phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate, 2 ATP are produced. Hence, the net production of ATP during glycolysis is 2 ATP. Here's the total reaction of the glycolysis. Thank you. Please don't forget to subscribe our channel, like our video and share as much as you can.